7.5 WBLS Commodores and Zoom. We're zooming tonight. We're zooming tonight right here inside of the Quiet Storm and we're zooming in the presidential debate as well. And as promised, I have uh, our dear friend who has uh, stopped in to uh, New York once again and is right here in studio with us. If you go to WBLS.com and click on the Quiet Storm page, you'll see us up close and personal tonight, live on live. Uh, it is nice to welcome the gentleman who you probably are so familiar with when he was a part of the VH1 Celebrity Fit Club, Dr. Ian Smith. Welcome back home, man. This is home for you. You say I'm stopping in. I feel kind of like right. you're this making me an outsider. No, no, this is this, this is my home. I, when I when that plane lands in LaGuardia <laughs> or JFK, let me tell you something, man. I feel like I'm home again. You it feels good. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Well, you know, the last time I, I saw the good doctor was uh, just a couple of weeks ago at Circle of Sisters. And ladies, I just want to start off by saying thank you for making it the most well-attended panel that we had that day. Uh, Dr. Ian Smith was on it, Dr. Tart, Dr. Hutchison. Uh, Nicole Ari Parker. The actress, yes. And it was moderated by um, uh, Judge Lynn Toler, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. who will be stopping by. But man, what a heated, it was heated good, right? one that we had. It was good. And Shirley Strawberry was there. You and Shirley were yes, working the right. crowd for us, thankfully, trying to keep them true. Let me tell you something. That event, I've been to many Circle of Sisters. That room was, I've never seen so many people at a panel like that. I mean, it was. Well, you know what? Uh, obviously, there's a lot of concern about relationships. Yeah. And uh, which led me to ask uh, everyone in my social network to send in questions tonight, because uh, for those of you who may not know, if you wasn't at Circle of Sisters, uh, Dr. Ian Smith, he came out with a book, uh, what, around a year or so? Oh, no, seven months seven ago. Seven months ago, mm -hmm. called The Truth About Men. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the, the secret side of the opposite sex, and uh, this was your first different kind of book than what you normally have written very different and you know it's interesting because at the event you know we had the book signing afterward and okay. we sold out of the book oh that's great and people were all upset yeah it's great but they were upset they said why don't you bring more books i just you know but <laughs> you can only take myself so, right. so many but also you know sometimes you never really know how serious of an issue it is for a lot of women uh and men too by the way it's not just a women's issue by the way but uh, women particularly in new york city in the area surrounding areas the numbers aren't great for women Right. And so these are real issues. And, uh, and the truth about men, I talk about ways that women can understand men better to maybe get the guy that they really want. Well, I'm glad you said that, because uh, before we go into this next song, one of the questions that came in, uh, Thomas Cena McDaniel said, why do men shy away from expressing their emotional needs and wants? Can you briefly tell me why? Very simply, because men, when the little boys are taught that showing emotions uh, acting on their emotions is very cowardly. It's not very masculine. And so men are taught to direct their emotions inward yeah. rather than outward. So we grow up. We grow up thinking that that is manhood holding all in and that is not the way to do it. In the book I say that men actually would like to release their emotions, but I show women in the book how to help them do that. So, but, but we have to learn how to do it ourselves. Yeah, sure. So how do we break that yoke? What because, would you say? Because men have to understand that having an open conversation with someone who you love and being who you are raw with someone who you love is how you find the best partnerships and make the best partnerships. But trying to be someone and an image that you expect someone thinks you are is not helping the situation at all. His name is Dr. Ian Smith, and he is with us tonight. If you want to talk with the doctor up close and personal, 212-545-1075. Now, you can text us. You can text COL to 77522 and uh, post up your relationship issue, comment, question, and we'll address them as well, all right? Text the, the, the words COL to 77522 or call us at 212-545-1075. Dr. Ian Smith is out of the quiet storm tonight. We're going to reminisce 
I'm going right. to reminisce because I know you love great songs, man. Yeah. So, needless to say, I know you have an appreciation for John Legend. He oh, often listens to the show when he's uh, home. So, let's go back and reminisce with John inside the Quiet Storm. 107.5 WBLS. Hey, you know what? I'm in love with you But this ain't the honeymoon We're past the infatuation phase We're right in the thick of love At times we get sick of love It seems like we argue every day I know I misbehaved And you made your mistakes And we both still got room left to grow And though love sometimes hurts I still put you first And we'll make this thing work But I think we should take it slow We're just ordinary people we What's up, y'all? I know y'all are watching us online. I appreciate you logging in to check us out. Oh. Uh, so we're going to address and, and talk to you directly because we could talk to you directly <laughs> with some stuff offline uh, that we can't probably say online, uh, on air. So we'll, we'll do that in just a moment, but we're going to grab a couple of calls right now. WBLS, hello? Hello? Nope. WBLS, hello? 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 Next one. WBLS, hello. Hello. Hello, hello. Hello. Nope. WBLS, hi. Hi. Hi, hello. How are you? Hi, how you doing? I'm good, brother. What's your name? Uh, my name is Jermaine Clark. Hey, brother Jermaine, say hello to Dr. Ian Smith. How you doing, Dr. Ian? All right, Jermaine. How you doing? I'm doing good. What's your question or, or a comment tonight, bro? Well, my question was was that I was involved in a um, domestic violence uh, dispute with my wife. Uh, it's been going on for about a year or so. But my question was is that um, how do I go about fixing things with my wife and showing that I'm sorry and I apologize without, without actions, rather, I want to say. Yeah, you know, you know, domestic violence is a very difficult issue and um, people respond and react to domestic violence very differently. Uh, a lot of the recuperation and recovery from domestic violence really depends on what the foundation of the relationship was before it occurred. And there's a lot of history, which we obviously can't get into in a quick phone call like this. But I would say that... Um, Part of it is how do you build trust back into another person? And in some respects, you have to give people space. I mean, you have to. I know you want to mend the fences right away, but mm -hmm. your partner may need just some space to process, to deal with, to really work with this, to see if she's comfortable with being in the situation again. The worst thing I can tell you in this situation is to be forceful uh, because then you're putting your needs ahead of her needs, which are to be able to feel more comfortable in the relationship. So, you know, it's it's a tough situation because you're 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 apologetic for what you did. You realize that you did something wrong. But on the flip side, you have to live with the consequences, which are you have to allow her to come back on her time and you just have to be supportive. I mean, it's no problem just kind of, you know, saying you're there and you're ready for her, but you being forceful is not the way to go. Okay. Good luck, brother. Thank you. All right. All right, man. You know, uh, dealing with that issue. You got another? Question? Oh, dealing with that issue of uh, domestic violence. Uh, in the reality of it all, it's, it's almost a similar or equivalent to cheating. Mm -hmm. If a person, and I, I, I think I know what your response is going to be, but I'm going to ask it the way I'm thinking of it. If a person uh, has uh, exa as has shown domestic violence to their partner. What's the likelihood of them possibly doing it again? Well, according to the studies, repeated uh, domestic violence incidents by the perpetrator are quite high. Um, and uh, however, that's the bad news. They are quite high. But the mitigating factors, and that is, how do you reduce that or what is the chance or how do you keep the chances lower, um, is that 
really the person who is the victim of domestic violence has to draw really clear lines and set really strong boundaries. Mm. One of the problems, uh, and I'm not blaming the victim, but one of the problems is that women are so forgiving uh, and they want the relationship so badly that they stay and they let it go and say it's not going to happen again. And I'm not saying you can't stay in that kind of relationship. That's a personal decision that I'm not willing to enter. But what I will say is if you are willing to stay in a situation like that, then you need to make very clear boundaries about what will be accepted and what will not be accepted. More importantly, you need to understand what was the what was the action right before the incident happened? Because it's typically an argument or something that causes this thing to it typically escalates. It just doesn't kind of just snap like that. It escalates. You should identify what it was that led to the es escal escalation and figure out whether or not you think this person is really going to be able to handle a situation again without going to that point. It's, 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 I think it's too much for the individual to be that mature enough if they've allowed themselves to slip in that in that fashion and and confront their loved one in such a harsh manner. They, they shouldn't that person, would you recommend them see, seeking counseling? Because Absolutely. I don't think... And not, but not that, just that person. The both. both of them need to seek counseling because... At the same time? At the same time. Because you need to have a third party who is neutral to walk through the issues and figure out. Because two people in a relationship can't see everything in the relationship. Sometimes you're, you're too close to the trees to see the forest, right? And so you need to have someone else who's sitting back and look, looking and listening to see whether or not. So I think counseling is, uh, is very advisable if you decide you want to stay in that relationship. If you decide one time is enough, what a lot of women do, then you go your way, he goes his way, and you know try to make it as amicable a break as possible. Because one thing I always fear when you hear about domestic violence is you deal with the cases where when the woman may walk away and then the guy doesn't want her to walk away. Oh gosh! Yeah. And you know, so so you know, even dissolutions have to be very careful. I, I've uh, and I'm not the only one, I'm sure, but I've been in a uh, abusive relationship. Um, but it was verbal. And mm -hmm. and abuse is abuse at sure. the end of the day. I didn't yeah. think it was abuse, though. You right. know, I was just kind of dealing with the relationship at the time and kind of dealing with it. But after a while, I, it, there was a breaking point, and then we just had to go our separate ways. But a lot of people don't know when to walk away. And I commend those who stay and who want to work it out. Doctor, I'm not that patient. Right. So I, I say it's almost like cheating, in my opinion. And, and I'm an unprofessional in this, obviously. But in my opinion, I don't know what the likelihood is of a person really uh, transforming uh, uh, or reforming from what they used to do than and going on a straight path so quickly. I'm not saying it's impossible to accomplish. I'm just saying I don't know how quickly it is to attain. Typically, domestic violence is the manifestation of bigger issues. Yeah. And if you don't address the bigger issues, then the likelihood that the domestic violence will recur, the likelihood is very high. His name is Dr. Ian Smith. You know, he is, you may remember him from the number one best-selling uh, uh, book called The Fat Smash Diet. Well, you know what, he has a new book coming out we're going to learn about. But if you didn't get this one, ladies, this is the one that you think you really need to get. This one right here. The truth about men. You always want to know what are we thinking and why we're thinking what we're thinking. And tell everyone once again, for those who are watching us for the very first time, what really made you come up with this book? And uh, obviously from the reaction that you got a circle of sisters, uh, <laughs> I think it was a great reaction. But what made you actually come out of your circle of uh, diet and, and, and well living uh, to deal with uh, a relationship thing? About fatigue. Fatigue. I, fatigue. I was tired of women, female friends of mine, who I thought were great catches, who had it all. They were smart, they were funny, good looking, they had good jobs, and they were single. And they just kept complaining that they couldn't find guys. And I just said, wait, hold on for a minute. You know, it's not just one person in, in New York, it's a friend in Houston, a friend of mine in Atlanta, all over the country I was going, and all my female friends would say, you know, man, it's so hard out here. And what I realized this very quickly, Lenny, was that people were – women were not understanding men or what men were thinking or saying, and therefore they were misinterpreting their actions. And so I wanted to say, this is what a guy is saying when he's saying this or what he means. This is what a, why a guy doesn't want you to have a key to his apartment. This is why a guy's going out with the boys tonight. If I think women have a better understanding, 
of what men are thinking and doing because guys don't express themselves very well a lot of times. That but if it, not very well, but if, if women can understand it better, then they can make better decisions about if they want to be in the relationship, if this is the right guy, or how to make some adjustments for themselves and for the guy. It's a two-way street. Not just women making adjustments, but guys too. If adjustments can be made to make it work. Uh, you have a, a, a point in the book, I, I can't remember what chapter is on, about ultimately what men want. And you, you say, according to the survey, I think it was done on AskMen.com, uh, most men want the family. When asked what the number one male status symbol is, the men, by and large, said the number one is setting, settling down and having a family. Women don't believe that because women say men are always so slow to come to the altar. Men are slow to come to the altar for a lot of reasons, but largely because men are afraid of making the mistake. It's not because men want to continue to have a swinging bachelorhood. Some guys, yes, but that's the minority of guys. The minority of guys do want to keep having their thing as bachelors. A lot of guys say, listen, I've lived that life. I'm getting older. More mature. I want to move on. Mm. But they're so afraid of making a bad mistake and choosing the wrong person and then having to deal with the aftermath of a bad breakup. So guys are just slow to the draw. Well, Susan hit that nail on the head. Uh, she said she posted it up a little earlier. Why don't men want to marry? They want to live together, play house, set, set up a no-selling commitment. Yeah, I mean, listen, let's be honest. There are a certain percentage of guys who just want to have the relationship the way they want the relationship and have the out clause. The out clause is you're not hinged technically. You know, you can always say, well, we're not husband and wife. Th those That percentage is always going to be there. But I'm dealing with the majority of guys who really are wanting to move in the direction of having a real long-term commitment, but either they don't know how to get there or they're unsure of whether or not this is the right thing for them. And for me, for example, listen, I dated for a long time, but I knew early on in this relationship that this was the right one for me. She had everything I wanted. And here's my litmus test. I wanted to marry someone who, if something ever happened to me, I could trust she would raise our children well. I wasn't interested whether or not she was the prettiest woman, whether she had this or that. It just I wanted to make sure that when we got older, this was the woman who I trusted, who I wanted to be friends with when I got older, who I could tell stories with. Because all of us as we age, our physical, you know, if the physical aesthetic is all that attracted to someone. Yeah, then it's not. The most beautiful women. Sense. The most beautiful women and most handsome men, we all break down. No Some sense. break down faster <laughs> than others. but it's, right. It's, it's, right, we all get older. We all get older. It doesn't change. Right? Right. However, we are all attracted to the physicality of a person. First. Absolutely. In the beginning, yeah, right. absolutely. Very, very beginning. That's but natural. That's not the substance in the bottom line. That's not. I always say to women, your beauty and your attractiveness will get a guy, but it won't keep a guy. Look at all the beautiful women who have had infidelity in their relationships or have been divorced. And I won't name any names. You know, look at all how... And you say... Other guys will say, how could he leave her? How could he cheat on her? Because beauty is just the attraction. It's all the other things that makes you hold on as the real magnet of a relationship. Dr. Ian Smith is his name. He definitely knows his stuff for sure. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, for the last probably month, I, I had came off of uh, my workout because I was having a little physical problem. But now that I, I've... Now that I think I'm, I'm better on course, I've put on a few extra pounds, so this book couldn't have uh, came into my attention at the right time called uh, Shred the Revolutionary Diet, Six Weeks, Four Inches, Two Sizes. What is this about? It's amazing. This, I got to tell you, I've written is, a lot of diet books. Are there books. diets in there? Yeah, this, is, this is a six-week program in which every day of meals is mapped out for you. Every day is mapped out. For day six one, weeks. For six weeks. The average weight loss in six weeks is 20 pounds. Without so, trying. And one more thing. The number one complaint on week one, the number one complaint, because I've had 5,000 people in the diet already, even before it's come out, the number one complaint is there's too much food to eat. Really? Well, they say you're supposed to eat like five small portions. People say they can't get through it. Because this book combines all of the best weight loss strategies and puts it in one place. Meal spacing, which is key, uh, multiple meals, low glycemic index, and... Of course, your calorie counts. This puts it all in one place. Okay, but once you get past the six weeks, and this is the this is the concern that I have with diets, and other people may have the same concern. Stop! I'm gonna cut you off. No, I'm gonna. Stop. I gotta nope. say it. Nope. This, this is a life. Saying. This is a lifestyle change. Oh, so you change. just keep doing it. I, I knew what you were gonna say. I know because <laughs> it's a legit question. I didn't. Right, right. Stop you. Because I don't believe in just dieting because you need to go to a reunion or get into a dress in three weeks. 
<laughs> I believe in making lifestyle changes. Okay. The reason why we call it a diet, obviously, because people know it. But right. but this really is a way of living. It's called shred. And the idea is you're shredding your fat. We have a whole page on Facebook called Shredder Nation on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And it's thousands of people who now are living the shred lifestyle, which is, by the way, not eating and drinking perfectly, but eating reasonably and making sure that you do things in moderation. By the way, in this diet, you can have pizza, grilled cheese, bacon. Oh. Yeah, because guess what? what are you like? going to live your life not having a slice of pizza? Hell no. Nobody is, right? <laughs> Nobody is, right? This program allows you, let's just say it builds in cheats, quote unquote cheats. It right. builds them in so that you can live normally, but teaches you how to eat better. Along with a physical workout? Everybody should want to do exercise, period. It's non-negotiable. Not just because of the weight loss, because of course you lose more weight when you exercise and eat well, yes. But because of your lifestyle and because your heart and your blood vessels, you need exercise just for longevity to live longer. Forget the weight loss. Dr. Ian Smith, y'all, we're going back online. 212-545-1075. Thank you very much for watching tonight. I'm Lenny Green. This is The Quiet Storm. And as promised, we always like to do these up close and personal. Tweet us. They got tweet things. us. That's right. He's at Dr. Ian Smith. You got to spell out the word doctor. Dr. Right. Ian. Ian is I-A-N. Smith, S-M-I-T-H. Okay. And me. And, and Lenny Green. <laughs> <laughs> One hundred seven point five WBLS. We're inside of the quiet storm. That's Miss uh, Faith Evans. Faith Evans was also at our uh, spectacular event, Circle of Sisters, and it was it was really phenomenal in great ways. Uh, and this gentleman was phenomenal in what he had to say. You know, every time I hear this brother speak, uh, he speaks profoundly and he speaks on point with about everything that you, he addresses. And I'm so happy that. Uh, he came by to check us out tonight. Ian Smith, Dr. Ian Smith is with us. If you'd like to talk with him, 212-545-1075. You can look at us up close and personal at WBLS.com. Just click on the Quiet Storm page, and we are boom, right in front of your face tonight. <laughs> so, uh, Dr. Smith, I uh, want to uh, uh, talk about another topic, because, uh, again, I want to try to address some of these uh, questions that came in. Uh, Babette Hayes, Ms. Hayes says, what should you do? When you're still in love with your ex. Let me say two things. The first thing, let me tell people, uh, if they have other questions, they should tweet us. Yes. They can tweet me at Dr. Ian Smith. Spell the doctor out. I-A-N Smith. Send me a tweet. Uh, and tweet Lenny Green. Yep. Lenny your Twitter Green. is? Lenny Green. Okay. At Lenny Green. <laughs> right. The second thing I want to say for answering that question is for those who are in the car or who are traveling and not in front of a TV, the president is giving it tonight. Am I allowed to he, say that? He, 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 you are allowed to say that. Okay. He, I think he has, and, and it's just about almost over. But he's so working tonight. I'm going to be watching this all night long because yeah. you know they're going to repeat it. That's but right. Yes, he, he's doing a great now, job. Now let me get to your question. <laughs> um, listen, to, I believe that just because you are in love with someone does not mean that you should be with that person. Okay? Really? Wow. Because sometimes you love the wrong person, meaning... You love a person who was not meant for you or who you should not be with. There are a lot of cases where people are in love, but they don't get along. They don't have the chemistry. They can't live together. They, you know, and it doesn't mean you can't still love that person. And so there's a reason why you're an ex, right? <laughs> I've heard that before. Yes. Yeah, there's a reason you're an ex. So now if you're an ex because you made a rash decision or you believe now that your ex has changed some of the fundamental flaws or issues that caused you to dissolve the relationship then you may have another go at it. But you have to be think very, very hard because I believe when a person goes through a divorce or a separation, it means that something dramatic mm -hmm. must have moved them in that direction. So you didn't make that decision willy-nilly, as they say. So if you're going to go back, you need to make sure that the issues have been resolved. Now here's another X question. Gracie Porter hit us up. She said, uh, is it okay for your family, for your family to still stay friends? With your ex. Wow. If your ex insane. still if your ex still should be at the family functions when you have someone new in your life. Yeah, that's tough. And my answer may be a little weird for people, but I believe yes. Really? Because I believe if it was an amicable breakup. A lot aren't though. A lot are not. <laughs> but if it was amicable, that's the key. If it was amicable amicable, I believe that 
the whole purpose of family is you form relationships. You just can't expect all of a sudden for cousin Tyree to forget about Don because you guys are no longer together. I mean, people build relationships like, but if it was a bad breakup, then no. And if the person who you are now dating or with is uncomfortable with your ex, then obviously that is not a wise idea. Dr. Ian Smith is with us tonight. Uh, we're definitely going to the love lines. 212-545-1075. We're going to talk about the brand new book called The Revolutionary Diet. Well, it's, it's Shred, The Revolutionary hey. Diet. Six weeks, four inches, two sizes. We're going to find out what is in this book and uh, what you need to learn about this Shred Diet uh, that is so powerful and, and changing already. You already did a survey. You 5,000 5, people, people already. He didn't put me on it, though. You're going I, I understand. I understand. You didn't put me on it, man. I have a little problem with that, but that's okay. Dr. Ian Smith, really appreciate you being here tonight. Let's uh, enjoy some music from a dear friend who is coming to town very, very soon. I can't wait to see her. I haven't seen her in a minute. Here's Miss Patty LaBelle. Oh, yeah. Inside the Quiet Storm. Mm. She's phenomenal. 107.5 WBLS. Thanks for watching tonight. Appreciate you. Let me record. <laughs> No, I want to. I want to record so I can get something.
You're inside of the quiet storm with Lenny Green on WBLS. You know you got it. Oh, baby. And baby, it's your now. It's sweeter, it's better, it's finer, it's greater than anything now. You've got some kind of nerve. Ooh, you're putting all that work. How you gonna do me like that? Who told you to use me like that? Where'd you come from? Out the blue. I wasn't even expecting you, but you got me coming right back. Cause baby, I need it like that. I can't see nobody else, just you and me all by ourselves. And now that it's all said and done, I know that I got number one. And maybe it's your love. It's sweeter, it's better, it's finer, it's greater. Heaven on earth, I'm giving you five stars for just being who you are. So there ain't no need to rehearse. Let's get straight to work. I don't want nobody else, just you and me all by ourselves. And now that it's all said and done, I found number one. And maybe it's your love. It's sweeter, it's better, it's finer, it's greater. WBLS. We're inside of the quiet storm. This is Confessions of Love, joined by Dr. Ian Smith tonight, who is the author of another book that I'm sure will be a number one bestseller as well. Uh, The the name of the brand new book is called Shred, the Revolutionary Diet. What's the purpose of this book, Dr.? It's a six-week program that allows people to lose 20 pounds in six weeks. It comes out in December, but people are already on it. 5,000 people are losing weight like crazy. If people at home want to do it, It's inexpensive, real basic food, does not ask you for perfection, and teaches you how to eat every meal for six weeks with substitutions and options. It's the best. It's all my best weight loss strategies in one single place. If people tweet me at Dr. Ian Smith, spell the doctor out, I-A-N Smith, or go to our Facebook page, which is Shredder Nation. That's a 
our community is now called Shredder Nation with two Ds. <laughs> um, they can get it. It's a, Lenny, let me tell you something. You're going to be on the plan soon. Uh, this plan is, is called the Shred because you shred the fat and it's revolutionary because it's so different. But people will enjoy this. It comes out in December, but people can get free samples of it now if mm. they tweet me or email me. Oh, that's what's up. All right. So um, once again, tweet him at Dr. Ian Smith and uh, you can get an advanced copy of it. Uh, I want to go to the love lines real quick. We have a, a young lady on the line. Kiki, say hello to Dr. Ian Smith. Okay. Hi. How are you, doctor? Hey, what's up, Kiki? How you doing? Um, not too good. Okay. What's up? What's but, your um, question? Uh, the question is, um, why do men play games when it comes to female feelings? That's a tough question because obviously every guy is different. But this is what I would like you to keep in mind. First of all, what you may think is a game he may not think it's a game. And if you do think it's a game, you need to bring it to his attention that whatever he's doing or saying, you're perceiving as it being a game and being annoying, and you need to have an open conversation about it. Now, if after having this conversation where he realizes you're serious about it, he continues to perpetrate the actions that make you think it's a game, then you now need to ask yourself a question whether or not this is the person you want to be in a relationship with. Oh my God. I guess I call you <laughs> hey, look, Kiki, thank you so much for calling in tonight. Please, uh, I hope you take the doctor's advice uh, to heart, okay? I will, but he's not my man, and I need to find one. <laughs> you need to find so one? Anybody out there, I am dead so single. Are you on Facebook? Are you on Facebook? Yes, I'm on Facebook. All right, go to my site, which is Shredder with two Ds, Shredder Nation on Facebook, okay? Shredder Nation. Shredder Nation. Shredder Nation. Okay. All right, and I'm post up, okay? Thank you. All right, Kiki. Thanks for calling. I man. like your name. Uh, I like your voice, baby. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We're going to learn today. <laughs> Yo, man, ladies be throwing it at the doctor, I tell you. Uh, ladies, he, he is, he is uh, in a, he's married, all right? Happily. <laughs> <laughs> hey, which brings me to another question that someone posted up for you. Uh, is a man required to dismiss all female friends when he's in a committed relationship or marriage? This is in the book. And let me give you a quick answer. It is unfair for women to say we want to become friends. It, and then mm. when the relationship dissolves, you then don't want us to be friends with that person again. So the new woman comes in and says, don't be friends with your old friend. But you guys say you want us to be friends. And yet you don't want us to be friends when it's convenient to you. Listen, it's one way or the other. So you're saying it's, 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 perf it's perfectly okay for you to still keep friendships. Of course, but you got to draw lines. Okay, you got to be open about it. That's the problem. Men get into trouble because they have these friendships and they're not open about it. You have to say, this is my friend from a past relationship. And, you know, they should meet each other actually sometimes. Uh, Dr. Ian Smith is with us, 212-545-1075. I'm definitely going to go into a, I got to keep you around for a little while, man. I I'm know, here. I know, I know. Um, but let me tell you real quick, though, don't forget, uh, coming up on November 2nd, I invite you to join the WBLS family at Resorts World at Aqueduct Raceway. I don't think you've been there yet, Doctor. I've never been there. Uh, every first Friday, you can uh, see the WBLS family there. Matter of fact, Jeff Fox and his band is going to be there. And uh, DJ Molly Marr is going to be on the ones and twos. It's going to be hosted by Shayla. And if you'd like to get more information, log on to WBLS.com for all the details because it's definitely, definitely there. Sounds good. It, it really is good. Stay close to me as well because I've got a chance for you to see Tyler Perry. Uh, he's coming out of character from the Medea thing. You know, ever, ever since Good Deeds came out, I think he's definitely on a different path. And he's uh, in this action-packed movie called Alex Cross. It's time to grow. It definitely is time to grow, and I think he understands that. Here's Keith Sweat on WBLS.
put some in your hands and bring you back here. Hello? How, how, how are you? Hi, is this a doctor? <laughs> no, I, I wish I was. This is Lenny Green. <laughs> what's your name, baby? What's your, what's your name? My name is Patrell. I'm from the Bronx, 1920. I want to really give a shout out to Laura Place, Wild Wild West Burnside. All right, baby. Well, thank you for doing all that. We'll say hello to Dr. Ian Smith. Okay, but um, now can I talk to the doctor? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How, how you great. doing? How you doing? No, how you doing? I'm good, thank you. Okay, you just sound so lovely, and I'm really listening to your words on um, relationships. And I, I, I really want to know, like, if, if someone was a, a, a friend of yours for so many years, and then all of a sudden y'all just happened to get together, like, um, it's it's just supposed to change. Like, everything just changes, and, and everything is just funny now. Nothing is the same of, like, when you're friends. Like, it's no more friendship, because everything is totally different and all messed up and wrong. It's, like, I don't know. It's, What's I, that? I know. You know that Trey Songs song that says, we never should have done it, mm -hmm. and then we liked it, you know? Listen, huh? I think you know that, what? well, I think Trey Songs talks about it, but listen, I think that if you're in a situation where you're friends, and you guys decide that you want to become more intimate as friends, understand the risk that you take. Either you are going to stay in that lane of intimacy. That's the first option. Number two, you are going to accept it as a one-time situation and return back to your normalcy of friendship. Is or that possible? Rarely. It yeah, can, okay. but rarely. And the third situation is that you have your little fling of intimacy, and then it really skews and alters the structure of your friendship forever. And this is why before you cross that line, whether you're in the heat of the moment or you're at the club, whatever it is that's giving you that kind of those pheromones going, you have to think right. hard about it. It's hard to come back when you cross that line. Yes, it is. And communication plays a lot in that part and that, 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 that relationship too. Yeah. Wow. And, that's but that's, that's why two consenting adults have to also be two smart adults and have to say, before we go here, Let's realize the risk. Now, you still may decide because of the heat of the moment <laughs> that even though there are heavy risks, you want to take the risk. You know, well, then you have to deal with the consequences. But, you know, it's a very tough situation. But, you know, I think it's lovely when two people who are friends who do end up becoming intimate and staying intimate. I just think. Oh, yeah, that's great. That's great, isn't it? That's great. Hey, baby, look, that's we got to go. I in the background. That's good. That's great. That's good. That's great. <laughs> we we... we at the studio, it's uh... <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Hey, my love, we we have to run, but thank you so much for the call. I thank you so much for your sexy voices, and oh, my gosh. Like, <laughs> have, a, really. have a good night, baby. Really. <laughs> WBLS, hello. Yes, hi. Is this Dr. I Ivan? Uh, no, no. This is Lenny Green. Uh, Dr. Ian is with, is with me tonight. What is your name? Uh, Keisha. All right, uh, Keisha. Uh, say hello to doctor. Say hello to the doctor. Hi, doctor. Hey, Keisha, you sound great tonight. Oh, I don't feel great. Oh, what's wrong? Okay, I, I just got married in August. April of this year, my husband asked me at, at the dinner table for a divorce. Turn around, family friends, seen him sitting in a park with uh, a girl. But he said he wasn't, but does everybody know who he is? What should I do? Wow. What yeah. should you do? <laughs> wow, is right. Well, because I don't even know if it's really a question, to be honest with you. I mean, you're married for less than a eight years. Not even a year. Yeah. And then you, your husband, out of the blue, asked you for a divorce at a dinner table. And then yeah, you see. And he said I was working too much, I wasn't spending time. Uh -huh. But I can't see how I wasn't spending time when when you get off of work, come home, spend time with your significant other. Let me let me tell you something. Let me give you some advice from my youth. I had a rule as a young guy, and it was this, because I wasn't the smoothest of guys when I was young, but I did have some pride. And my rule of thumb was this. I never want to be with someone who doesn't want to be with me, period. And this is a situation where it seems very clear that this gentleman does not want to be with you, and as tough as it may be to accept that and to listen to that, the pain of that is a lot less than the pain you may be up for if you try to stay in a relationship with someone who has told you in no uncertain terms that he doesn't want to be with you. This is just a fact of life. I got a quick question for you, though. 
Yeah. How, how long were you with him before you got married? Four years. Wow. And, and, and obviously, and you, have, you both have children together? No, we don't have kids together. He has his own set from a previous marriage, and I have my own set, but I wasn't married. I see. Listen, it's tough. Relationships that get dissolved are tough, but sometimes the dissolution of a relationship is actually moving forward. And you have to look forward and not backward and, you know, listen to what he's saying. And I think he's speaking pretty loudly. This is not ambiguous. This is not one of those ambiguous situations. Right, Lenny. Right. He's saying, I don't want to be with you. And it hurts that way, but you can find mm -hmm. happiness somewhere else. Thank you for and calling, also, baby. Wishing you the best of luck. Stay he, strong, okay? He also asked my um, niece um, to send, her, send him a sexy picture who she's like 14. But he said he was only playing. You don't play with kids like that. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Um, and the, look, I, I think the answers are right there before you. Uh, I, I mean, follow you, wrong, follow, I put the divorce papers already in, but and I got family members and friends that's behind me. But you know, I still needed. You know, I, I, I don't know. You you wanted more confirmation. <laughs> yes. You just got it. Hey, baby, thank, thank you, you so much for calling. Tonight. I appreciate it, and good luck. All right. Thank you. Thank you all for right. calling. Take care. Bye bye. WBLS, hello. Finish? Oh. What? Oh, oh okay. okay, okay. okay. So, uh, Dr. Ian Smith has been with us uh, for the, the last few minutes since uh, s since we kind of started the Confession of Love. And a uh, brand new book called Shred the Revolutionary Diet. Uh, the only way you can, you can get an advanced copy of this, only which way? A sample of it. If they tweet a me sample. at Dr. Ian Smith, spell the doctor out, or if you go to our Facebook page, which is Shredder Nation, it gives you instructions on how to uh, get an advanced uh, sample of the diet. I'm losing. Uh, I'm losing track. How many books have you released so far? That's number ten. That's number <laughs> ten. Where do you find time, man? Because I often wonder about authors. Where do you find the time to really sit down in your travel? Let me tell you something. <clears throat> Writing is a real passion of mine. It's not work to me. I got you. Um, and so, I, also, I'm a great typist. I'm very fast. That's one of the best classes I took in high school, even at the time I didn't think so. Oh. But I can bang out pages so quickly because I, I don't write on paper and then have to type it. Look, a lot of my friends do. And I just think that, you know, I get in the zone. I get into a writing zone. Right. And I go off by myself for hours on a day. Like, I'll be in a two-week zone. Really? And all my friends and family will know Ian's in his writing zone. So that means... I keep weird hours. I'll be up at three o'clock in the morning, listen to people on online, yeah, you know, yeah. um, on the radio and then typing and working. And that's just how you do it. Different authors have different styles. My style is when I go, I go hard. Well, you know what? We all should adapt that kind of uh, philosophy. I do want to address why we have some time before we go back yeah. on the air. And again, I thank you guys for watching us online tonight. Uh, some of the topics that came in that we probably won't be able to get to on air, but we can address them here. Can you stay with someone if you're not sexually turned on by them? Wow. They, 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 I wow. commend you guys. You guys really put up some great questions. These questions are phenomenal. Great questions. Can you stay with someone if you're not sexually turned on by Let them? Let me start that answer this way. Women have a much easier time than men doing that. <laughs> Let's start that way. Wow, because... We can't do that. No, 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 no. <laughs> and I've asked women, actually, I've asked my friends, how are you able right, to, to be in relationships? Because you and I, to be honest, you're not physically attracted to him. It's going to show in so and, many ways. And you know what they say to me? They say because it's not that they're physically attracted. They're attracted to other aspects of him, and that's what makes him attractive. So why can't we adapt to the same Because point? men are extremely sexual from a physiological standpoint. But I hear that women, and I think it was brought up, uh, in, in, in that panel that we had at Circle of Sisters, women think about sex, if not more than we do. Yeah, but that's not the issue, though. Here's the difference. There's an anatomical and physiological difference. Okay. A man requires a stimulation to Dude. get to the place where he can engage in the physical act. <laughs> a woman does not require the same physical stimulation. Gotcha. Now, it doesn't mean she's going to enjoy it, by the way, but she doesn't require that stimulation physiologically speaking. So women can get away with not being physically attractive and still having the intimate relationship. A guy, if he's not physically attractive, physiologically, you can't do it. Which brings me to the other thing that we just covered the other week, where we talked about can men 
fake orgasms. I say we can't. But there were men that called in that said they not only that we can, but they've done it. Yes. A man can fake an orgasm. It's not as easy, by the way. You have to be a great actor. But Right. And uh, I don't want to get too graphic, but... Um, <laughs> no, we're online. So we're online, <laughs> yeah. But there's also there's just, a history here. <laughs> I gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> but the other part of it is that, yes, the answer is yes, men can fake orgasms, but it's a lot more difficult because there is typically some type of physical evidence as to whether or not a man has orgasmed where a woman does not have that evidence. And so a man has to be very let's say, agile in his ability yeah. to carry it off. <laughs> Dr. Ian Smith, that's his name, baby. That's his name. Watch out for him. Watch out for him. <laughs> yeah, right. What should you look for? What What should we as women look for in a man in terms of love? And how do we know it's real? You can answer this many ways, but this is my thinking. When a guy truly enjoys... Dr. Gonna, Bob Lee. The Dr. Doctors. Bob Lee. <laughs> the one and only. <laughs> All right, man. Good to see you. When a man is truly wanting to be with you outside of a physical relationship, when he wants to spend time with you, when he misses you, and it's not all about sex, then you can start realizing that, wow, he loves me for me and not because of our, our physical relationship. I think that's a huge, huge thing. Listen, sometimes relationships are just sexual. Yeah. Let's just call it. Yeah. Sometimes they are. And, yeah. you know, he wants it when he wants it. You want it when you want it. And you know what? You come to an understanding. That's what it is. But if you're trying to see what the litmus test is of whether or not a man is truly in love with you, I think you have to judge what he does outside of the bedroom yeah. and his interest outside the bedroom as a, as, as a revelation of how much he's into you as far as love is concerned. You said that you met uh, you knew early on that your wife, when you first started dating her, was going to be the one. Uh, but do opposites really attract? You believe in that theory? Yeah, I do. But I think while opposites attract, um, if they don't complement each other well enough, they can also repel each other. Because if you lack its common interest at some point, um, if you have huge philosophical disagreements in how you look at life, politics, religion, whatever, that at some point that could become more of a distraction than an attraction. Dr. Ian Smith, uh, the man who holds 10 titles of uh, books to his credit. And is about to release another one come December, right? December 24th, in time December for Christmas. December 24th. Uh, perfect for a gift. <laughs> <laughs> you cover a lot of things in his new book called Shred the Revolutionary Diet. Some of the things that he's covering is uh, um, the challenge, the transformation, the cleanse. Um, what should, what, what's most important in those three? The challenge, the, 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 the cleanse? Mm -hmm. or The diet is a six-week cycle. Each week stands on its own. And what happens is from the prime, the prime week is to get you ready for the other five weeks. It teaches you how to space out your meals. It teaches you how to look at making better choices, not the best choices, but the better choices. So it really, instead of being dramatic, a lot of diets start, start out with a detox. Mm -hmm. And I, Fat Smash does that, my old diet. Mm -hmm. But some people just can't handle that dramatic shift in the way they eat. That's and, right? right? So what I do is I slowly bring you in to eating better and exercising better. And it gets more intense and more intense and then it lets up. The food is varied the entire time. One of the major problems with dieting is that people get bored of the same food. Right. This book and this diet shred changes the food all the time. Now, you know, it, with, uh, with, with our people uh, who, you know, uh, people of color as ourselves, our diet plays a big role in our lives and mm -hmm. what we eat. There's two words and two areas of concern that bothers me and, and I try to stay on top of. Uh, Sodium, salt is plays a big factor, and and with that on the opposite end, diabetes. Sure. So uh, with this book giving us a, a, a perfect guideline, uh, how does it address that? And and you know for us for people of color, I had a woman who's uh, high blood pressure for years, who did so well on the program that not only did she lower her blood pressure, her doctor took away her medications, her blood pressure medications. Wow. Because the, the good news about the bad news of high blood pressure and diabetes is that while they are very dangerous, there are a lot of things you can do from a lifestyle change that can help you control it better. That's the silver lining in the cloud of these diabetes and, and high blood pressure. And what I tell you all the time is, while you have the diagnosis, don't resign yourself to that being the rest of your life. That diagnosis is a wake-up call for you to make some changes. And when people make, in fact, with diabetes, if you lose 10% of your 
weight, you can reduce your risk of diabetes by 50%. Really? Dramatic. 10% of your weight. 10% of your weight. So if you weigh 200 pounds and you drop just 20 pounds, you can cut your risk for diabetes in half. It's dramatic. And now how, how does that play into, uh, into uh, high blood pressure? High blood pressure is not just weight. It's also what you eat. And for African Americans, we tend to be salt sensitive, which means that our bodies respond to salt much differently than other ethno backgrounds. And the issue is that salt causes water retention. And it's that water retention that causes sometimes the increase in blood volume and blood pressure, and that's a problem. Dr. Ian Smith, that's his name. Please follow him on Twitter at Dr. Ian Smith, spell out doctor. And uh, he has a new Facebook page. New Facebook, Shredder Nation. If you're on Facebook, come to our page and like it and get a free sample of the Shred Diet. Please make sure you do that. Thank you again for watching. We'll continue to do more of these wonderful things. I know you enjoyed this, brother, when he was on uh, <laughs> uh, Celebrity Fit Club. As a matter of fact, someone had posted up a little earlier that I was looking at. They said, do you stay in contact with a great majority of, of the folks, especially the sergeant? I do. Harvey's doing well. Harvey. <laughs> Harvey's doing well. We're going to bring we're gonna bring back the old crew. Hey, listen, uh, for you guys at home, you're first to hear that Lenny and I are going to be doing a seminar <laughs> where you can come visit us to talk about your relationship issues and um, – You'll have the two of us one-on-one -on -one and a special guest, and uh, it's going to be great. So stay tuned to hear yeah. about this seminar. There you go. Stay there tuned. You, you heard it first. I wasn't going to leak it, but <laughs> thank you for confirming it, Doctor. I appreciate that. And look, we got more coming up in this hour, including a chance for you to watch that brand-new movie uh, that, uh, of course, Tyler Perry is in. I don't get a chance to go to the movies often. I, I can't imagine you going to the movies. Um, I haven't been in a while, but I got to tell you something. The role he's playing was actually made famous by Morgan Freeman. Right. It's uh, based on James Patterson's novels, which is a very famous series of books. And Alex Cross, which is a black FBI uh, detective, is actually the uh, most famous agent, is the most famous of his characters. And this is uh, this going to be great, interesting to see. Role. I hope he can pull it off. It's because it's a big role. It's because big. Morgan Freeman has, like you said, done this quite a few times. He and, is Alex Cross. And, yes, he is. He and really I'm surprised is. that he's not still Alex Cross, but that's another conversation. That's another conversation. <laughs> Hopefully there's still no more controversy for Brother Tyler. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, stay tuned. We're going to go live in just a moment, yo. <laughs> yeah, because I'm like. One hundred seven point five WBLS. That's a question everyone asks from time to time. Do you still love me? You know, I don't think you could ever say it enough. If you really, truly, wholeheartedly love someone, you should never hold those feelings in. You should let them know how much you love them and show them how much you love them as well. This is the Quiet Storm, and I am happy to be joined by my good friend Dr. Ian Smith. Uh, who has taken up time out of his busy schedule to stop by once again? And, and since the last time you've been here, I have uh, I have ventured into the arena of golf. Now uh -oh. the question is: Will I have the nerve to really get shown up by you <laughs> and and go out golfing with you? I don't. And Michael so Strahan, my good friend Michael Strahan, you a big know what? I, I'm I could imagine you guys do it. Far more. I'm just the beginning. I'm still. I'm still hitting the the woodpeckers out of the tree. That's all right. We yeah. all started there. We almost crawled before. What? Let me tell you something to people. <laughs> listen, Circle of Sisters just happened. We had a great time, Circle of Sisters. Can I tell you what, one of my favorite parts of the day what? was when your voice came on, <laughs> and it's like <laughs> some people didn't recognize you, right? But when they heard your voice. The crowd just kind of lit up because they knew that that was Lenny Green. Really? I just well, thought, yeah, you know what? I'm just the thankful, presence. man. I'm thankful. <laughs> I, and I had a great time that day. That was my first Circle of Sisters. And I am just uh, thankful that everyone came and attended our, our seminar because it was dealing with relationship yeah. issues. And, mm -hmm. and the ladies came very open minded and they didn't hold back anything. I'm just sorry we couldn't get to everyone. And you know what I learned from that seminar? Um, 
that we need to do more of those because the need for that in our community, it's great to have that venue at Circle of Sisters, but we need to do more of that on a regular basis so w women yeah. at all times can participate and hear some great information and advice. Well, you know what? If you don't mind, I, I think I may venture down that road. I'm going to have to pull you right into that, man, wouldn't you? You can't pull me if I'm already there. <laughs> <laughs> and look, Dr. Ian Smith has a brand new book that's about to come out in, in December. It's called Shred the Revolutionary Diet. As a matter of fact, you're giving a wonderful treat uh, for those who uh, hit you up on uh, Facebook or on tweet Facebook you. or if they tweet me at Dr. Ian Smith, spell the doctor out, I-A-N Smith, I will send you a sample of Shred the Revolutionary Diet. It comes out in December, but listen, we have about 5,000 people on the program. The average weight loss in six weeks is 20, 20 pounds. Wow. The beauty of this program is it is simple, it is straightforward, and it's more than just a diet. It's about teaching people how they can make small lifestyle changes to bring big results permanently. That's the key, not just to lose weight for you know, a reunion or getting to a dress. Or, this is to lose weight for good and be happy with what you're doing. And by the way, still having you know, some cake every once in a while, huh. some ribs. I you have can that. Cheat. You can cheat you, a little bit. It's not a cheat though. Mm -hmm. See, cheat implies it's, it's wrong. No one's going to eat perfectly for the rest of their life, but there's a way to incorporate those foods that are less healthy into your diet and that's what Shred teaches you. And our, we have a whole nation it's called Shredder Nation on Facebook. Uh, that are people, a, a support community of thousands of people who are sharing recipes, encouraging each other, working out, forming teams. Well, I'm going to join. It's the bomb. I'm going to join that page right. as well. All right, Doctor Ian Smith, I can always talk to you, man, for hours and hours. <laughs> There's never enough time in the night, man. But, but thank you for stopping by. I, I appreciate these little visits when you come into town, <laughs> and uh, I, I still extend an invitation anytime you want to come through. Please, by all means, it's always an enlightenment and, and educational move. Lenny, you are always number one for me, man. Appreciate always. Bro. Appreciate. <laughs> You in a great way. <laughs> Dr. Ian Smith, inside of the quiet storm tonight. Let's continue to reminisce. As a matter of fact, let me give you that chance right now to uh, see this uh, hot new movie that's coming out with Tyler Perry and uh, uh, Matthew Fox is in it as well. It's called It's called Alex Cross. So call me 212 545 1075. Be my 107th caller, and you will be in the theater with us. You might remember this. Here's after seven, ready or not. It's the quiet snow, baby. What? Yeah. 